Hey everyone, Evan Kerstell here with another great discussion around healthcare technology and digital health. Today with Enrique Estrada, the Senior Director of Healthcare at VMware. Enrique, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on, on the call today. Well, thanks for joining. And I'm really excited for this discussion as I am one who wasn't really familiar with VM's work in healthcare. You're, you're really embedded in many, many healthcare organizations and hospitals around the country, around the world. Before we dive into that, maybe introduce yourself, uh, your, a little bit about your background and your role at, at VMware. Yeah, sure. So uh, I've been at VMware a little over a year now. Um, it's been a great ride since I got here. Um, my role really is focused around building global solutions for the market, really working with our partners, um, sometimes even directly with our customers to help develop solutions that really drive an impact, help solve problems, uh, focus on market transitions, um, or really uh, just there to maybe help transform what they're doing today in healthcare. Well, that is quite a mission, and you've been around the block a few years, so I'm really excited to to dig deep with you. And, you know, I love the, the idea of trans, uh, transforming patient care through digital health and health technology and wearables and IoT. But maybe let's start with some definitions because everyone has one when it comes to digital health. Wow. What is your definition? And most importantly, what's VMware's definition of digital health these days? Yeah, uh, that's a great place to start. And I think um, just like anything new that's out there, uh, it, there is a kind of this umbrella term to digital health. Um, I'm sure you can Google it. You'll find <laughs> there's some institution out there that's probably created some clear definitions around it. Uh, and I think almost to answer this question, you have, you have to go back in history and think about how did we get here? Um, it really has been an evolution of using technology, medical devices, collaboration to um, really kind of be immersed into healthcare and, and in the clinical workflow. So, uh, if you go back just a few decades, telemedicine was very much in the same kind of situation, very broad. What does it mean? Um, and there were some very clear, I would say, use cases that helped define it. Uh, telepsychiatry, um, tele teleradiology, uh, tele-ICU, tele-stroke. So we started to see a lot of these kind of um, use cases define what telemedicine was. Now there's a much more clear kind of description of what that is under the American Telemedicine Association. Um, but it's been kind of this evolution of how do I use this kind of technology, whether in a consultative mode with video or other, and start to bring it forward. So we saw this evolution move from telemedicine into telehealth. Um, and we started to see a lot of integration being done in the clinical workflows, along with, let's say, video, if you will. We saw a lot of store and forward technology. And then as we started to see software just advance at a much faster pace. And we started to see a lot of outside influence from healthcare coming into healthcare. Um, we started to see a lot of new ways to leverage technology, moving away from this monolithic kind of model, if you will, in, in healthcare traditionally to looking at things that are a little bit more API focused. And so today, when we think about what is digital health, um, I think it's a lot focused around, uh, again, using the, the telemedicine uh, analogy, it's like driving new use cases that help engage patients in, in new ways, um, using technology to help kind of engage uh, providers and life sciences in new ways. And so we're seeing a very fast acceleration of technology applications, mobile, all being infused into the way care is being delivered. And there's even newer use cases that are even outside of your traditional norm of healthcare, like, you know, clinical retail, for instance. And so for us, you know, to answer that second part of that question, you know, for us, what digital health means to, to VMware is, you know, a lot of it's focused on building on top of a platform and you still need to be able to scale, whether you're scaling in the cloud, in the data center, or if it's across multiple cloud providers, you need a fabric that helps you kind of stitch all that data together, operate that data, and very quickly just make sure that you can um, make sure that data is accessible to those that need it. Oh, that's a great that's a great explanation of what you're doing in your mission at VMware. And you know, when it comes to um, health tech and digital health, it really is all about patient care. At the end of the day, I'm a techie, and yeah. I love tech for its own sake and we as technologists often love 
the latest tech, uh, the latest wearable, the latest cool devices or apps. But uh, what are you seeing about how digital health is really transforming patient care on the ground and on the ground in real and meaningful ways? Yeah, there's so many different ways you could really answer that question as far as transformation. We're seeing absolutely the transformation in, in the data centers, in the infrastructure, for sure. We're seeing a lot of people, um, you know, when I sit down and, and I talk to CIOs and chief medical officers and um, folks in different areas of, of healthcare delivery, I know a lot of them um, are saying, I don't want to continue to build out a larger footprint in the data center. Can you help me? figure out how to virtualize this or, or make it more efficient as far as pushing my workloads to the cloud. So there is very much a transformation happening at the infrastructure level. Um, and what that means and what that evolves to is, you know, helping scale and, and grow um, uh, what's where I'm looking for, how you actually leverage the, the scale of the technology you're delivering to make sure that that means something to the clinical workflows. Um, but if you look at other areas uh, of health as well, and what that means to, let's say, uh, mobile health and mobile engagement, um, we're seeing new ways where mobile device management and how you track kits that go out to patients that have been discharged or how do you develop modern applications, for instance, for diabetes, um, how that's being accelerated through things like containers, right? And so there's a lot of different ways that digital health is absolutely helping kind of drive that transformation. Um, but it comes back to those use cases I talked about earlier. Yeah, very, very true. And of course, VMware is known for everything cloud, multi-cloud, super cloud, public cloud, hybrid, and... and Everyone gets it, a cloud. <laughs> everyone gets a cloud. Yeah. But the yeah. healthcare IT landscape is just so complex, right? I mean, you have so much yeah. legacy. You have all kinds of data privacy, data oh, protection yeah. uh, requirements. Uh, you, you have, you know, the public cloud seeping its way into into this environment. So, you know, how can, how can you help or how do you and you know, plus partners help at VMware? Yeah. So one of the things that we're really focused on, especially in my group is, is very much leading with an outcomes focus, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we have um, an amazing sales team, amazing transformation team here. I would, I would say more advisory um, that really go in and they do an amazing job of selling into hospital system, healthcare delivery payers, uh, and life sciences. And I think, you know, what starts to set us apart is um, having a conversation that's a little bit more outcome focused and leading with outcomes. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the reality is everyone's got a tech play. Uh, every vendor does, right? But for us, if we kind of lead with what are you trying to achieve from a clinical outcomes perspective, right? If you're trying to change your HEDA scores, um, if you're trying to you know, meet new ACO measurements, right? How do you do that? And one of the things that, especially with my background, before I got here, I really spent a lot of time in healthcare reform, understanding those drivers and understanding what are the payment models that are driving the changes that really kind of, uh, I would say, um, influence how technology and the spending technology happens. And so for us, if we can go in and understand how we, help customers understand, like if you're trying to reduce your, your from a pop health perspective, your HbA1Cs for a particular cohort, how can we help you with that, right? Maybe it's through mobile engagement. Uh, maybe it's from a different aspect of developing a, a modern app to track diabetes. And let me just spend a second on diabetes because I've spent a lot of time in my career just in that one chronic mm. disease. Um, I think the latest number I saw was about $350 billion are spent just on focused on that just that one disease state right and the reality is is when you have one chronic condition you're more prone to have probably two and become comorbid uh, and that spend gets higher and so when we sit there and we talk to you know how can we help you lead this digital transformation it's very much coupled with what are you also trying to achieve from a population health perspective mm -hmm. uh, are you trying to focus on congestive heart failure are you trying to focus on this value-based care model. Um, so we we very much lead with that type of conversation. Oh, that makes total sense. And indeed, when you look at the hospital environment these days, it's a tough place. The front line of uh, doctors Absolutely. and nurses are, are really stretched and there's tremendous uh, churn and, and, and employment and attrition. 
the the, yeah. the front back office, if you will, the IT folks are frazzled <laughs> trying yeah. to keep track of all these applications and services and needs of, of patients. And um, oftentimes the networks are frankly pretty antiquated. If you look at the anything from the WAN to the LAN to the you yeah. know the, the the data center, the wired wireless networking. Yeah. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, right? So how do you, how do you work with partners? Because of course VMware can't do it yeah. all. I think yeah. you have a pretty big right. ecosystem. Yeah, and let me let me I'll come to that question in a sec. But you touched on something, um, and, and it's very true, and it's very front and center right now, especially with the pandemic and everything that's happened with that. Is you, you mentioned the frontline workers, right? And then you mentioned also in the same sense, you know, antiquated technology. Um, so. We're absolutely, this is part of that whole digital transformation that we're seeing right now is that digital employee experience. And what we've seen, we not just VMware, but you know, the folks in the industry is the rise of traveling nurses because mm -hmm. of you know, the, the frontline workers and th this kind of mass exodus of um, people that were providing care have left that, have left the industry. And so we have seen a rise in, um, in traveling nurses, which has always been an industry, but we haven't seen it really drive impact like it is now. And they've really stepped up. And so one of the things that we've started seeing that we're hearing directly from CIOs are how fast can you help me develop the technology or deploy the technology in my, in my enterprise that can accelerate the onboarding of traveling nurses because, or anybody just in that nature that um, is there to provide care. Because the last thing you want to do is, um, you're, we already have an access issue when it comes to healthcare, but the last thing you want to do is, well, you have the talent, you have the people that know how to provide care. What you don't want to do is extend their onboarding process to two or three days to figure out credentialing, single sign on, what devices. And so we've absolutely been helping. Um, we have a lot of the tools in our platform today that helps accelerate that onboarding process ensure that the credentialing, the security, the identity management is all there. Um, and then to answer the second part of your question is a lot of our partners actually help us scale with that. So we don't, we're not selling direct to every situation. We're absolutely working with our ecosystem and working with our partners to help develop and de deliver these solutions. Um, but there is another aspect that we're working with partners on as well. And that is partners bring a lot of intellectual property that they've developed just in healthcare or in the, in the payer provider and life science space. And so we, I like to say, I like to use this rule all the time and people probably roll their eyes because I've said so much. It's like, we're either playing the 2080 rule or the 8020 rule. Um, and that is either they're leveraging 80% of our platform to help them scale and they put their IP on top of that and they wrap their managed services around that. Um, or they just use 20% and uh, it's just the opposite, right? We flip flop the percentages and it's, you know, they bring the greater value or we're pr providing the greater scale. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, the mission is still the same. It's to help healthcare delivery. Um, and partners bring a lot of unique intellectual property with their software that rides on our stack. So we work these partners a lot to help deliver those types of solutions. Um, I like to say we're also the unsung heroes in healthcare. So we have partners today that absolutely just, you know, have done a magnificent job in engaging patients, rolling out technology, and we're a fabric that uh, is behind the scenes helping them do that. Oh, fantastic. Well, speaking of unsung heroes, you're, you're so passionate about the healthcare space. You were actually served as a Marine as well. So thank you for that. Yeah. So how, mm -hmm. how did you, you know, after your, your service get into the healthcare space? What was interesting yeah. or attractive to, uh, to that for you personally? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's pretty interesting. I think I was brainwashed. That, so the Marine Corps marketing did an amazing job, especially on probably five-year-old kids. So I just remember as a little kid seeing the commercials, the blues, you know, and, um, and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, right after I graduated high school, I found myself kind of in this, like, what do I do next? Cause I wasn't going to go to college at the time. So, uh, joined Marine Corps, uh, joined, uh, sh just before the Gulf War, uh, went through boot camp, went through the school of infantry. And then sure enough, I get deployed, uh, overseas for the first Gulf War. So, um, best experience of my life ever. Uh, I still talk to, uh, 
to a lot of my good friends from the core. And I, it's been almost 30 years now. So, um, but it, it helped me really kind of, I would say, have a lot of discipline in what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think one of the biggest things I take away is being very mission oriented. And I think, I, I think the other big thing is like learning how to execute, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, everyone has like, there's this old saying back from my Cisco days, right? Uh, a couple of executives came up with like this, everyone has a vision you know, that's for the rookies. The toughest part <laughs> in doing anything is how you execute on that mission. Uh, and I learned a lot uh, through my journey in the Marine Corps. So when I got out, um, very much wanted to go back to school. So I went, got my four-year degree. Uh, and then I found myself in Silicon Valley in startups. And then it really was by chance that I, I landed in Cisco. And I was building uh, network backbones for hospital systems, um, not by design, all by just uh, the way the universe works. And I became the healthcare guy at Cisco. And then that led to um, basically being very privileged to build the very first telemedicine solution that operated in high def. Also, we integrated uh, medical telemetry right into a router. So uh, we built some pretty unique software at Cisco. And then uh, I realized, you know, this is pretty impactful. It's not, this is the first time I really feel like there's an impact that my fingerprints are on that's going to have some result uh, or affect someone's life. And so it was at that moment that I I realized I'm never going back. Uh, I'm stop being an engineer. I'm going to focus on product management. And then, you know, my journey began in healthcare from there and it's, it's been great. Well, it's so great to hear about what you're doing personally and the team at VMware. And again, you're, on a mission, you're a driven guy. So can't wait to to see you out in the field. I think you'll be at Hims and yeah. other places this year and uh, look forward to chatting further. So thanks so much for sharing your story and the vision of, uh, you know, empowering patient care at VMware. Uh, it's, it's been a great discussion. No, I loved it. Thank you so much. And by the way, I love the plants. You, you changed the whole <laughs> mood. So uh, I appreciate uh, the time today. It, 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 green is great. So let more green out there. Thank you.